This video today is brought to you by Rose Butter, my handcrafted organic butter that is infused with Rose Absolute Oil and is only around for the summer. I mean, seriously, it smells so good. I made a video about plantar fasciitis back in 2016, but I am revisiting it because what we know about the human body and what we know about how the human body works is always changing. Before I dive in though, I wanna give a shout out to Till Luca and Whitney Lowe, who produce a podcast called The Thinking Practitioner. One of their recent episodes was a deep dive into this very specific topic. It was an amazing conversation about revisiting what they knew, discussing what they know now, and pondering what they might not know yet. I'll include a link in the description below. I will also include a link to the Massage Mentor Institute where Till and Whitney and myself all have continuing education classes up and available. And one more thing, I'm going to be talking a lot about fascia today, and I can't talk about fascia without one more shout out, this time to my friends over at anatomyscapes.com. If you want to know anything about fascia, they have you covered. Link? Yep, it's in the description. Okay, so here's what I know. You've been listening to me talk for about a minute now and watching me work on the calf, which if you know where the plantar fascia is, you might be wondering why I'm doing this, or you might already understand the connection between the foot and the ankle and the lower leg. What you might not know and what most recent research suggests is that our fascial system is deeply connected to our nervous system and our endocrine system. So yeah, the science behind what stress does to our bodies, and most specifically our feet, is real. After thoroughly warming up the tissues of the calf, I'm bringing my work down into the ankle and the heel. I'm doing that because the fascia that wraps around the posterior compartment comes down and attaches into the calcaneus and various parts of the posterior foot. Fascia, as you may have already heard, is very much like a fabric in our body. So if there's tension in one area, it's going to affect the whole. Spending some time in the calf is going to give me a lot more freedom to do what I want to do in the heel and down into the foot. I just did the same technique squeezing my palms on either side of the heel from the other direction, but I'm doing it again from this direction because there's just so much connection converging at the heel from the lower leg and the foot, and the pressure of being stuck in the middle can just be too much sometimes. I'm starting to focus my work more on the pain associated with plantar fasciitis, and that typically shows up as a tightening or a sometimes severe ache in the bottom of the foot. Having just worked through all of that connective tissue down the lower leg and into the heel, I'm going to continue to use mostly friction type techniques to pull that fascia or that fabric down into the bottom of the foot and help it to feel like it has a little more movement. Like I said before, fascia responds to our nervous and endocrine systems. So our stress hormones and nervous energy create a protective or a guarded response. It's bad enough to be fascia anywhere else in the body, but in the bottom of the foot, it helps us to understand why plantar fasciitis is so prevalent. Back to the heel, I'm starting to draw little circles with my thumb around the base of the heel close to the arch. But side note, please be careful of this area. Plantar fasciitis often goes hand in hand with bone spurs and bone spurs are painful. So avoid the area if there's a bone spur. I've moved down into the arch of the foot, which is essentially like pushing into the bow string part of a bow, like a bow and arrow. And as I sink in with my left thumb, I'm using my right palm to push down into the ball of the foot, essentially lengthening out that bow. This can be a little painful, so making nice with some cross fiber stretches will help soften the blow. Up to this point, I've done a lot of work, loosening up the fascia through the lower leg, around the heel, and into the foot. But fascia surrounds muscles, and the muscles in the bottom of the foot get very constricted with plantar fasciitis. So using my left thumb here, I'm sinking into those deeper muscles as I use my right palm to push the toes into hyperextension. As I release the toes into a neutral position, I'm pushing down a little bit farther into the arch of the foot, therefore sinking down deeper into those muscles and breaking up a lot of that tension. I find myself here at Meridian Point Kidney 1, otherwise known as Bubbling Springs, and I'm going to hang out here because we could all use a little grounding. I'm going to come back to a little friction around the heel here because in my opinion, the heel can never get enough friction. But then I'm moving on to a kind of foot fold. 
So from the lateral side of the foot, I'm using my fingers to drag across the bottom of the foot towards me and using my thumbs to pull the lateral aspect of the foot over itself. This just starts to pull the fourth and the fifth metatarsals, or the bones of the foot that bear the most weight, away from the grip that's happening at the arch. Once I've moved things around a bit, I'm gonna drag out laterally again and create a really nice stretch across the fibers of the plantar fascia. The human foot is actually comprised of three different arches, and paying attention to all of those addresses plantar fasciitis with a lot more detail. There's so much more work that you can do here, but if you find something specific you wanna dig into a little bit deeper, placing the top of your client's foot in one hand while you do the work into the bottom of the foot with your other hand eases that chronic nervous and endocrine system grip and allows the foot to let go even more. In my years of doing body work, I have found that friction and deep myofascial stretches are the best approaches to address fascial tension. So I'm gonna wrap up this video with some of that. Frictioning through the ball of the foot brings all of that work down away from the heel and then using my forearms to connect everything from the foot through the heel up into the lower leg is the myofascial icing on the somatic cake, so to speak.